In this video, we're going to go through the procedure pages for the heat effusion of ice. The last, or during the lab, we collected data. And during our last video, we went through some algebra to come up with this equation to be able to find the heat effusion of ice. In looking at the equation for the heat effusion of ice, it says look at your notes and pre-lab. Write the equations needed to find the heat effusion. Be sure to use the correct notation. So what I'm going to do is just copy the equation that we developed here. So heat effusion, delta H F U S of our ice was equal to the negative mass of the water times the change in temperature of the water times the specific heat capacity of water all subtract so if we wanted we could put parentheses around that all subtract the mass of the melted ice times the change in temperature of the melted ice times the CP value of the melted ice all divided by the mass of the melted ice. Now we have some values that we will be using for these variables plugging those values in along with the units. Don't forget units. That's very very important. Don't forget your units. The mass of the water will come from your data table where you found the mass of your warm water. And we'll be using the average values for these calculations. Mass of the warm water, and you have that in grams. The change in temperature of the water is change in temperature of the water. It started at about 50 approximately 50 degrees Celsius and it ended I think the instruction said between 2 and 5 degrees so you're gonna be about 2 to 5 degrees around 2 to 5 degrees Celsius subtracting the 50 degrees Celsius so this change in water temperature is a negative value it's dropped so this when you put this in, this is going to end up being a negative value. So the negative and the negative will cancel out, so those two will end up being positive. The CP of water is a value that we look up, and the CP of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. The degree Celsius on the bottom unit and the degree Celsius on the top unit will cross out. The grams on the bottom unit and the grams on the top unit will cross out. And you'll be just left with joules here. And then we have the mass of the melted ice. So the mass of the melted ice will be the same as your value here, mass of the melted ice. That will also be in units of grams. Then the change in temperature of the melted ice. Remember, we're talking about the ice that melted. So the ice melted at zero degrees Celsius. Final temperature, change in temperature of the ice. So you have an approximate change in temperature or approximate final temperature between two and five degrees. Remember that that ice started at zero degrees Celsius where it's melting. So use the temp of the ice. It's going to be approximately 0 degrees Celsius. It may be negative 0.5 or negative 1 or real close, but it's going to be close to 0. And your final here was close to 2 to 5, but this will be a positive value because the final is higher than the initial. So then that gives you your change in your temperature of the melted ice. The CP value of the melted ice. This is water. So the CP value is also equal, the CP of the melted ice is also equal to the 4.18 here. Then the mass of the melted ice, that is the same here. So 
the melted, the mass of the melted ice is equivalent to the mass of the ice. They're the same exact thing. The ice melted and turned into melted ice. We're going to place each of those number values here with their units, showing crossing out units, multiplying, multiplying these guys, then multiplying those guys, subtracting them, and then dividing by the mass of the ice, showing me that the final units of delta H F U S of the ice, the final units should end up in joules per gram. Then, finally, to find your percent error. You will take your accepted value, accepted value, and then your experimental value. Experimental value. So this is what you got in your experiment here. And what's the accepted value? Well, the accepted value is the real value, 334 joules per gram. So whatever your value is from your experiment, we will subtract that from 334 joules per gram. Once you do that, you divide by the 334 joules per gram, and then you multiply by 100 to get it into a percent. You multiply by 100 to get into a percent. And we're looking for under 10% error, under plus or minus 10% error. If this is larger, you're going to end up with a positive value. If this is lower, it's going to end up with a negative value, but plus or minus 10% error is what we're looking for. I hope this helps in understanding the heat of fusion of ice.